So good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a, another episode of our Sutton Coalfield uh, in focus uh, session of, of, of podcasts and, and video interviews that we're doing with members across uh, Sutton Coalfield for our, our weekly newsletter that comes to, comes to you on a on a Friday and across also our social media uh, channels. My name's Chris Burton. I head up the chamber in Sutton Coalfield. Uh, it's a pleasure to be joined today by Victoria Platt and Declan Kirby. Uh, good afternoon, both um, from Henwood Court. Uh, financial planning, uh, which is uh, one of our, our key members in, in Sutton, and uh, it's really good to be joined with you both today. So, how are you both doing? Good, thanks very much, Chris. Good, thank yeah, good you. thanks, Chris. Wonderful, wonderful. Just a bit of background with, with Henwood Court and, and Victoria uh, is, is, is on our uh, Sutton Coalfield Executive Committee and these, these interviews are really something that we've, we've wanted to work with our committee on uh, since our, our new president started Phil Arkinstall uh, around about six months ago now and really an opportunity to, to speak to some of those experts in their fields in the local area to get a bit of advice and thoughts on, uh, on, 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 on their sort of area of expertise. Uh, this week we're talking about tax and with a tax day, it was billed yesterday. Uh, we'll come on to that perhaps in a little bit, but um, uh, really an update as we move into the new financial year about where and how uh, local businesses and businesses from across really Greater Birmingham should be uh, should be looking at and where they should be looking at both individually and from the business point of view. So uh, we have Declan, who is the uh, the, uh, the the fresh faced uh, expert in that in that field. So uh, Declan, uh, thanks for, for joining us, and we'll come on to Victoria in a minute as well around Henwood's sort of ongoing uh, engagement and plans for the business. So Declan, thanks th again, thanks for joining. Um, we wanted to sort of look at four specific areas today. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just give us a bit of an idea. We mentioned about pensions, ISAs, capital gains, and inheritance tax, go one by one. So just tell us a bit about pensions and what, what and where our members and businesses should be should be looking to, to uh, you know, to, to some advice for them on that area. Yeah, absolutely. So with obviously the financial year coming to a close, we're on the 24th today, but of course the tax year, given the, given the way the weekend falls, things need to be done really by the 1st of April. So that's the first thing to, to note that the, 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 date, the date, of course, is the 5th, but really things need to be tied up a little bit earlier. First, first section talking about pensions. Then. I mean, pensions are a fantastic vehicle, for both for individuals and for the business. And I'll come on to why that is important. So pensions then. So a pension is a, is a tax free wrapper, of course, and a way of saving for your retirement. Um, I'd like to mention that it's, it's key that individuals and businesses look to maximise their, their annual allowance. That is the maximum you can put into a pension in a given tax year. So for most individuals, HMRC, uh, they provide income tax relief on pension contributions of up to 40K, okay, in a given tax year. Uh, allowances can be backdated uh, to mop up the, you know, uh, unused allowances in the previous three tax years. All growth uh, is free of income and capital gains tax, which is very um, crucial and unique to that wrapper, of course. And it's structured correctly uh, it doesn't form part of an individual's estate for inheritance tax purposes. Um, look, it will differ for high, higher earners. And when I mean higher earners, typically people earning upwards of 200 grand so in relation to that 40K, that will be tapered down. But again, that's something you should engage with a professional to go through with you, given the complex nature of, the, of that area. But in relation to, to businesses and then why pension funding is important for businesses, it's a tax efficient way of extracting money from a company. Okay, so 90, a corporation tax currently stands at 19%, uh, looking to rise to 25%, you know, in, in, in years to come, what the Chancellor announced. But you've got to view a, a pension contribution as a 19% uh, reduction in your corporation tax bill. Okay, so a 20K uh, gross employer pension contribution will save you about 3,800 in corporation tax. So again, that's something you should really look to utilize either as an individual, but of course, both of the business. Um, affordability is, of course, a crucial thing to check with your accountant before doing it, but it's something I would encourage you to look at for okay. the end of the year. Okay, thanks, Declan. Wonderful. And, and you mentioned around sort of ISAs and, and those areas as well. Just give us a bit of an idea around, around the ISA uh, tax uh, situation uh, as we move into the year. Yeah, absolutely. So, so ISAs, of course, are a different product. What you, you need to pensions is tax relief, okay? So you get tax relief at your highest marginal rate, whether that be basic rate tax, 20%, higher rate tax, 40%. Or additional rate tax at 45%. ISAs, you don't get that, unfortunately, but it still is a, a very useful product of way of either holding cash or investing. So, so what is an ISA? An ISA, again, is a tax free wrapper, no, no income tax and no CGT on, on investments within, within the wrapper. Um, £20,000 is the maximum you can put into an ISA in a given tax year. So, again, we would encourage you to look at putting funds into uh, either a cash ISA or an investment ISA, dependent on your objectives and what you're trying to achieve. Um, for, 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 the, for the reasons of no capital gains and income tax. Uh, 
You can't carry forward any unused allowances. So it is a use it or, or, or lose it type scenario. Uh, and again, I would encourage you to talk to a professional about if you are looking down the investment route about how to structure those investments aligned to your objectives and your risk tolerance. Cash is a, a much more simple strategy. It's just sheltering tax, uh, sorry, cash, the, the interest on, on cash from, from tax. But investments, I would encourage you to speak to someone. Okay. Now, now in, with ISAs as well, there are other ISAs you can look at. This is for personal affairs, you know, saving for for uh, for children, for your children, uh, junior junior ISAs is a product that was they've been around for a while now, but they're worth looking at as well. Cashier investments, junior ISAs is what they're called. Um, you can save less into them. You can't put the full twenty k in. Okay, it's nine thousand pound in the current tax year, but it's still quite generous. If you're looking to save again for children's university funding, property deposit, that's worth worth looking at along with lifetime ices which is a different product again but it's for people who are looking to uh, uh, purchase a pro first time property purchases or, or a retirement vehicle again the limit on that is, is uh, 4k the government will give you an uplift of 25 percent of whatever you put in so if you put 4k in they'll give you a grand each tax year so it's maximum of 5k into that wrapper in a given tax year but again something to utilize a 25 percent uplift whether it's cash or investments is something worth worth taking account of Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned, you know, it's getting that, that time of year and, and looking through for the next 12 months is to get that, that in place and understand sort of where, where you can make those savings and, and, and really, you know, help your, your, you know, your personal or your business uh, situation uh, on that regard. So interesting. And, and you mentioned obviously capital gains and then inheritance tax. Again, it's, uh, there's lots of figures and lots of sort of areas to look at. But yeah, just give us a quick update on that. And then we'll, uh, we'll perhaps come to your couple of your key tips on that as well. And we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So capital gains tax, of course, is if you, if you make a gain on an, on an asset, you've got to pay tax, unfortunately. I mean, you've made the gains, so you've got to pay a bit of a tax. Depends which way you look at it. Um, so, so for so for investments outside of a pension or an ISA, uh, if you if you if a gain in a given tax year is above your annual exempt amount in a current tax year is twelve thousand three hundred, you pay tax, okay? And, and the rates of tax that you pay are based on uh, what asset it is, and and what um, or what taxpayer you are. So if it's uh, anything other than property, it's ten percent for a basic rate taxpayer, or it's twenty percent for a higher rate taxpayer or additional rate taxpayer. If it's property, it's 18 or 28. 18 for basic rate taxpayers, 28% for higher rate or additional rate taxpayers for property disposals, okay? So it's very important to be utilising your CGT annual exemption of 12,300 with regards to investments and trying to top up your ISA with it, flushing out gains and utilising that. Again, it's a use it or lose it scenario. So if you don't use the 12.3, uh, it's gone, okay? So it's important if you've got stuff in, Stuff like German investment accounts, which is a taxable wrapper or unit trust, looking to sweep that across into ISAs or pensions is definitely worth looking at between now and the 1st of April. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. And, and as you say, it's just having that, that understanding and taking that, that advice and, and, and I suppose looking at, uh, looking at where that money is going. And, and I'm sure in the, last, uh, you know, in the last 12 months, people have needed to really take a, a strong look at that. And, and, and obviously, it's a really important part of the finances. Now, thank you, Declan. Really interesting yeah. Updates. I suppose, you know, we look at the, the overarching sort of tip that you would give give members, you know, members who are watching this today. What is probably the, the one sort of key part of advice around the whole the whole sort of tax and pensions area that you would advise people to do? Yeah, I think it's it, look, we, we are quite late in the in the tax year now, the 24th, 4th of March uh, of March when this is being recorded. Uh, I think it's planning ahead. It's always it's always difficult. We've found a lot of clients, both new and, and ongoing clients, have put things off given COVID-19 and the impacts that had on the investment markets, uncertainties to businesses. Uncertainties to businesses is, of course, something that had to be managed. But, but investment markets, as long as it's been professionally managed, uh, uh, shouldn't distract you from, from sort of utilising and planning early. Leaving everything to the last minute can cause a lot of stress and unfortunately, they're maybe not being able to utilise things. So again, it's utilising what you can between now and the 1st of April uh, and then planning forward for the next tax year and years after that. So really just planning ahead. Yeah, and looking forward for that for that 12 months, you know, if you're not in a position to have looked at it this time around. And, and, and I think, yeah, that's the key. We wanted to sort of bring you both you and, and Vic in. We'll come on to Vic in a moment in terms of, the, you know, those what you see from from your clients and your members locally and across the, the group. So no, thank you. Thank you, Declan. Really interested. I wanted to bring in bring you Victoria as well. Victoria, I hope you hope you're well. Um, obviously, you know, we've we've been in touch regularly through the course of the last 12 months. And it's you know, it's been a difficult year for everybody. But. Penwood Court as a as a business, you know, have, have, 
have gone through quite a bit of, of change in terms of uh, the new office and the, the refurbished uh, grade two listed office, as you called it earlier, which is absolutely right. Just give us a bit of a, a, a more general and, and sort of operational view from, 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 from your, your, your position in the business about how Hen would have worked and dealt with the last 12 months and perhaps how you're looking forward as we hopefully unlock through, uh, through into April, May and, and, um, and, and further into the future. Absolutely. I mean, thank you, Chris. The Chamber have been massively supportive as well over the last 12 months. We've had these conversations, you know, a couple of times and it's great to know we've got a network of people around us to help um, help each other out. So thanks for that. Um, yeah, so it has definitely been a very interesting, <laughs> interesting last year. Um, on the back of what Declan says, I mean, the team are absolutely, this time of year, everyone is completely flat out. So it's keeping everybody upbeat, motivated, while still, of course, working remotely. Um, and yeah, we had that amazing um, refurb of our already lovely barn. Um, and I think we locked down probably about a week after we'd put the last piece of wallpaper up. So that was timing so now we're just really keen to get everyone back into the office back to how we used to work and uh, not that we're not working brilliantly at the minute but of course we just want the camaraderie back yeah um, and that, that fresh wallpaper and that fresh look that you'd worked so hard to, to do you know we'll still be there and, and as you say getting people back safely but but in the right way and and, and in a positive outlook about the business is really important isn't it Absolutely. And, and carrying on looking, you know, we've continued throughout to look at new technology. We're always looking at making ourselves more efficient, as I think most of us are. Um, continually training the team. Um, you know, we pride ourselves in a really professional team of, of, of great people. And that means that we get to, uh, on the back of that, work with equally great clients. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the case. Yeah. Always. We're all going through that right now, aren't we? That move to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, yeah, getting that face to face discussion back, Declan, as you mentioned around, you know, the, the amount of advice and the amount of sort of stats and, and areas, there's a lot. And, and I suppose, you you know, getting that face to face contact, albeit through Zoom at the moment, but being able to invite people into your, you know, your offices and, 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 and that local sort of connections is really important, isn't it, more broadly. And, um, and I'm sure that will, uh, yeah, that will certainly be the case in the next few few weeks and months. And we look forward to seeing how how you, you as a business and a chamber member move forward with that. So thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Declan. It's a pleasure to speak to you both. Um, I say this is a, this is really a, an opportunity for, for chamber members to get a bit of an idea about, about this, this area. Uh, if, if you're watching this video and you do want more information, please do get in touch with myself or, or Declan or, or Victoria to, to discuss in more detail. And we'll, uh, we'll look forward to uh, hearing perhaps in 12 months time and see where the, uh, where the situation stands, uh, stands then. And uh, Victoria, Declan, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time, Chris. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. Thank you.